Hello everybody, welcome back to the Big Bad Bench. Today, I want my Mac TV. I don't know if I'm going to get it though, because this thing, this thing was a nightmare last week. So we'll see if we can, we can correct that this week. And look at this mess. Look at this mess on the Big Bad Bench. We got chips randomly dangling about. Look, there's some chips in the microscope. We got chips out here. We got a halfway recap power supply or uh, analog board. We got just a mess here. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to work on the logic board first. We're going to put these chips back on. We'll try powering it up. And if it doesn't power up, then I'm going to go drinking. Um, and But before we do that, we have to give away this very special Macintosh LC3. So we're gonna do that today before we get out of here. I'll make you hang out for a while before I uh, before I <laughs> choose a winner. I'll torture you all with soldering chips back onto the uh, the logic board. And so who do we got in the chat today? We got Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, Retro Techie, Adam McGee, Retro Fox, Trina's Techno Babble. And Gut Bomb and Action Retro and Vic the Vicar. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for stopping by. Um, so yeah, this this Mac TV has has given me some consternation. Um, so the the caps didn't look too bad, but the more I started playing around with it, um, the more I really didn't like the um, the way the logic board looked. Um, I'm going to move this over. Let's see if we can make this look a little bit better. Um, so I gave this thing an ultrasonic clean. Um, I re I took these chips back off. So this is the, the egret chip or the CUDA chip. And this is some sort of, I think, a voltage regulator. And then I took these chips off because it looked like there was more grossness underneath there. And then over here, there were the near these two uh, caps, three caps. Um, I took that chip off because that one was gross. So everything got cleaned, and so we got to put this all back together. Chris Angelus and Lazy Glue, Blue Goat are here. How's it going, everybody? Thank you for stopping by. Um, so let's put some things back on. Um, so I don't know. If you're like me, and some of you might be, I don't know. Uh see these chips right here in this kind of format I've always had issues soldering these kinds of chips back on um, obviously the first thing you want to do is look at the little the little cutout um, we're gonna put some flux on this board first we'll put it on both spots first um, those keen-eyed of you might notice that I'm using a different flux today. This is Chipquick SMD291. Um, I ran out of my other stuff, so this stuff's going. Um, Tech Knight's here too. No, I haven't figured anything out. So, you know, I after last week's stream, I went in and looked at the board in more detail, um, and it was just really gross. There was just crustiness everywhere. Um, so what we're going to do is, is I, I, you know, took it all apart, took these chips off, ultrasonically cleaned it, and now we got to put these chips back on. I also halfway re, um, recap the analog board. All right. So I'm trying out this tip. This is a new tip for me. It's dirty. So I'm hoping that this thing just slides under there and lets me stick those on real easy. Let's see, how did that go? Hey, look, it's on. All right. Oh, look, I just knocked it off. <sighs> I thought I was doing good. There we go. That's better. I 
What the heck is going on on in chat? Flux heresy. <laughs> So the other thing you should be able to do, if you have three-dimensional vision, is just slide that in there and let the solder take over. Yeah, that worked nice. Now we're soldering like professionals. Frodo Jedi, how's it going? You're listening as you're mowing the grass. That would be great if I could do that. My Wi-Fi doesn't work in my yard real well. <clears throat> Jack 68K is here, how's it going? So this is cranking right along. So this tip is pretty great. This is the first time I'm using this tip to do this kind of soldering work. Oh, we might run into some issues over here. We'll see. Yeah, it's a little harder, but it's still going. Oh my god, I'm going to go nuts there. It's uh, starting to be fruit fly season here in western Massachusetts. <laughs> fruit flies are driving me crazy. I'm going to put this one, tack this chip on. Oh yeah, so the other thing that let me do by taking these chips off, oh my God. Um, aside from it, let me clean all the chips off real nice, is it let me check for um, breaks in any of the traces. Mike T100, how's it going? So if you're a real pro, you can just tack that down and like you can get it close and then use your hot hot air station. It's not my favorite technique for doing these, but sometimes it helps to get them all reseated. <clears throat> Retro Techie uses a pine sill. <laughs> Sleepy Malibu, how's it going? All right, so I just did that. Now I forgot where I was doing here. Right, I think these are all, I think I got three of the sides done. So if you haven't been entered into the drawing yet for the LC3, make sure to do that right now because we'll be picking the winner by the end of the stream. So just go comment on that video. I think the link is in the description. Just going back around these. One more time. Don't forget to solder the battery in place. I did solder the battery in place, RetroTechie. That was one thing I did off camera.
See, this is the... Th oh, you can't see what I'm seeing. Okay, here we go. All right. So this is the kind of thing that drives me nuts with these. Is not being able to get the heat onto the little solder pads. this is sitting up a little bit I think that's what's keeping me from getting good solder joints on that thing uh, yeah I think the LC and the LC2 have that many caps to make this a little easier for both of us to see or all of us to see <sighs> okay, so what we got here is that this thing is not sitting down real nice, so it's making it hard to solder onto that chip. I, I don't think I need, I think, yeah, that's one of the serial ports, but what I'm going to do is I need one of my heat things. I'm going to need another heat thing. I'm going to hit that with some hot air. Let it set down a little bit. Oh, we've got to turn our hot air station on. We're going to go up to 380 degrees.
There we go. I think it's a little further down now. Adam says, is it fixed yet? No, Adam, I'm incompetent. You should know that by now. Okay, I think that's set down a little bit better now. Gonna grab this next chip while we wait for that area to cool down a little bit. Should have put flux down first. Panman GR, welcome. All right, let's solder some of these. So Vic the Vicar asked what I paid for this. Um, I paid 300 bucks for it. It's more than I wanted to pay, but the outside was in such good condition. I was like, the inside must equally be in such good condition. Oh shoot, I forgot to ask Sean. Sean, if you're still uh, here, how, how's your hand doing <laughs> from your uh, skateboarding accident? Chris Angelis, yeah, I got it off Facebook. Yeah, you probably saw it there. Um, I think they were asking 500 for it. Make sure my solder joints look nice and shiny. Yeah, I'm not li as lucky as a lot of people are with <coughs> computer deals. Sorry. Um, Like, if this were Adam, the dude probably would have paid him to take the computer away.
All right. <clears throat> Here and touch these up. And put these with some flux. This board's gonna need a cleaning again. There we go. So we can see how those float a lot nicer this time maybe you can see man I gotta get a better camera set up <clears throat> gut bomb got Wi-Fi on his blue scuzzy excellent more flux over here are good now we got to do this little guy this time we'll remember to put the flux on first just because it helps the well aside from it helping the solder flow it kind of helps keep things from moving around too much this goes that way I think And of course I get flux on the top of my chip. I'm sorry about this glare. This is ugly. All right, one more chip to go. <clears throat>
Alright, I think that's all our chips. Uh, let's go to this. <clears throat> Alright, so you can see here, I got a pile of capacitors. Those were for the analog board on this thing. You can also see here <laughs> that I still have a whole lot of capacitors left. There are a ton of caps on this analog board, so I got the ones that I think were the most likely needing replacement. But in reality, I mean, I smelled a little bit of fish, but it, it really was not bad. Um, I didn't see much leakage. Like I, there were a couple caps where I could see a light little ring around them. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. All right, let's put a keyboard in this thing, on this thing, attached to this thing. <clears throat> Am I collecting caps or max? Um, okay. Oh, let's get stupid and put a mouse on it, just in case. I don't think we're going to need it. Okay. Three, two, one. Okay. Heard the, the high voltage go on. Just looking real quickly to make sure that I don't see anything else kind of weird that I forgot to connect. I think we're good. Okay, here we go. Three, two, one. Yes! <laughs> nice. Retro Techie says, check under the anode cap for leaks. Um, yeah, we're not going to do that, Retro Techie. Don't. Oh, geez. We got stuff on the screen. Okay. So this is the wrong remote. This is my remote for my 5200. All right, let's see if I can make this work. Shaky cam for a minute, hold on. Sorry, it's gonna be kinda... No. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> Ugh. Oh yeah, very shaky cam. Oh, I'm having camera issues. Oh geez. Whoa. Wacom driver failed to load. Neat. This used to have a Wacom attached to it. Okay, it's giving me a clock error. Okay, so actually I forgot. We can't check the TV. Because, one, this little part of the TV board has so many caps that leak, I had to take that apart. And then there are more caps inside the tuner. You can see them in there. So I'm going to replace all those before I put this back together. Yeah, sorry about the, the flashy. But it worked! How freaking cool is this? Um... I don't see anything. I'm wondering also is the um Yeah. 
So this remote works with the Apple TV apparently because it just switched over to TV mode. You can't see it there, but it's got a little thing in there. I just hit power. It's going to shut down. There we go. Yay! We have a functioning Apple TV. All right, I got to fix the camera again. Hold on. <laughs> Shaky cam. Ugh. Well, that's a relief. Oh, what time is it? All right, it's only been a half hour. Excellent. Um, so I think what we're gonna do now is choose our winner. Hey, JVHS. I made progress on your XT board this week. Turns out I'm an idiot. And um, uh, the I, I, the beep codes were backwards from what I was thinking. So I think I found the problem and I should have your board done this week. Um, so, so sorry, that was a side note. Uh, Gut Bomb says I should still go drinking, though. Yes, that's true. I can do celebration drinks. Um, actually, I'm going to see a concert tonight. Super stoked to see Modest Mouse and the Pixies. That's going to be a really awesome show. Um, so, yeah. That'll be a fun thing to do to celebrate getting a Mac TV working. So, yeah, we're going to gonna recap this thing at some point. I need a whole lot of one microfarad, 50 volts, and some other caps. So we're going to be working on that for a while. Um, but we got a, a hard drive that works. We got this thing that's working. Um, all right. So let's see. Will this TV be tubular now? Well, I mean, it's a TV, right? Uh <laughs> All right, so let's do this drawing. Let's figure out who's going to win this LC3. Uh, what are we doing? We're going to do this. Okay. So I'm going to move a thing here. Is it high def? I mean, I think it does 800 by 600. That's kind of high def, right? Um, all right, what's happening on the screen? Okay, you can see what I'm seeing here. Now we got to this is the video. Got to copy this. We're going to put this into here. We're going to filter duplicate users. We got to do some math. All right. Good luck everyone. Here we go in three, two, one. Number of unique comment. Oh, it didn't do it. It just got the comments. Okay, you can there. Yeah. The number of unique comments. And now we gotta do this thing. Here we go. Keith Sheehan. Alright. I'd love to win this. I had a pizza box max back in the day. Very cool. All right. So Keith Sheehan, um, contact me. I'll try to, I'll leave a comment for you down underneath the video. Um, and we'll get, we'll try to connect. And if I can't get connected to Keith Sheehan, then, uh, we'll pick another winner maybe next week. How's that go? Retro Techie says, Oh, that's my real name. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So yeah, very cool. All right. So what about what else are we doing? I think we're done. Jeez, I think this is going to be a super quick stream. Um, I mean, unless people want me to stay on and uh, want to watch me fight a whole bunch of RAM chips that I need to desolder, I can do that. People want to watch me desolder RAM chips. 
Oh, man. Oh, yeah, I wanted to know. I'm going to turn this back on for a second. So I have the keyboard unattached. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So, all right. Just was curious whether this remote would actually power this thing on, and it does. Very cool. Okay, so Trina, Jack 68K, Sloopy Malibu say they want to watch me curse at the desoldering station. Okay, let's do it. Ooh. Oh, geez. Oh, man, I dropped so many things. All right, we're going to have to get this off of the... the um, Big bad bench. Okay, here we go. Okay. I will be right back. Okay, so here we go. So what we have here is a Samsung... I think it's an S330 XT um, clone board. And let's show you some of the stuff that's been happening. That, so there's been a lot that's happened with this board. So um, one of the first things was um, the ROM chip was in really bad shape. Um, you can see that some of the legs needed to be soldered back on. And so I, I didn't really quite believe in this ROM chip. Um, I also put a new socket in cause one of the pins kept bending. And so I got rid of that socket, put a new socket in. Um, I also downloaded, there's a guy that on uh, GitHub has custom ROMs for XTs. Um, oh yeah, the other thing that needed to happen was the CPU socket needed to be replaced. There were broken pins or broken traces underneath the CPU socket. So um, fix those. Then we had no clock chip or clock signal on the CPU, which is I think this pin right here. So there was no signal there. So we got that resolved. Um, needed to put a new clock chip on there. And so it kind of almost sort of does something now. Um, let's get it. Electricity. And so when I first got this, nothing would happen. Um, so three, two, one. Okay, so um, one second, let me see if I can pull this up real quick. So that's our beep code we have now. Um, so let's go to here and not that and that. We're gonna switch this over to this. Okay, so this is the Wikipedia entry for the guy that has the custom ROMs for these things. And so if you heard that beep, it was do, 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 you know, three and a one. And so I was thinking it was this error code, so the three, one CPU instruction test failed. But in reality, I think that the, um, the, it's actually, one short and three long because that one was a shorter beep and what that tells us is that the first 16 kilobits of memory is bad which when i was poking around on the um memory chips with the um oscilloscope it did seem like there was some weirdness there um so what we need to do now is desolder some of these ram chips and uh yeah <laughs> It would be nice to know which is the first 16K, but let's see what happens. Um, what are we doing here? So let's zoom in a little bit. There we go. 
Okay. Someone now has to remix John's version of the tone. Yeah, there we go. That would get me my million views I need. Um, but it's doing stuff, right? Like, we got a board that's doing stuff. All right, so this board was also in such awful condition when I got it. I mean, the, the, it was gross. There was corrosion. Um, this got some vinegar. It got the ultrasonic bath. Oh, yeah, there's this mess over here, too. There's some sort of little chip here. I can't tell what that chip is because it, it's been too abused. And one of the leads on that thing was broken. And then as I was trying to fix it, I broke the other lead. So, yeah, so now we have, like, these wires. There were also broken or corroded traces back here due to battery damage. There was one here and then one there. Fixed those. Um... But yeah, so what are we going to try to do, if we look at this thing, if we look at our numbers, right? U120, 121, 22. So I'm going to assume that this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, that would be our first bank and a parity chip. Um, so we got to start desoldering these things. Okay, what do we think? Oh yeah, this is gonna be the thing that really drives me nuts. So, oh yeah, since these are so, cor everything was so corroded, the solder doesn't flow nicely and all the leads are bent over. So this is gonna be an ordeal. Um, you're probably gonna see me cry during this. So I'm glad that you're here um, with me, my emotional support people, as I cry, trying to take off these RAM chips. Okay. Uh, let's go to the microscope. Let's turn this on. Oof. Oof. Yeah, so I think what we're going to do first, I think what we'll do is we'll just do two chips to start off with. <laughs> Will this be the end of Big Bad Biologist as a kid-friendly channel? Good thing I don't have my my channel set as uh, safe for young viewers. Um <laughs> Uh shoot. So what we need to do is we need to soften up the solder that's here. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, this is bad. So you can see eventually you can get it, but there's there's a layer of crust on all of these that makes it hard to get going. Once you get through it, it winds up flowing okay, but when you get that corrosion on the top layer of solder, it makes it very difficult to um, to get it going. So I'm going to flow it first, get the solder flowing nicely, then we'll come in, going to bend our, our legs. Okay, so you see see my process here. See why I don't normally show this? <laughs> Cause this this is tedious. So you just gotta keep heat on it for a while until the solder starts flowing. Giving it a little fresh solder helps. So I do feel bad because JVHS gave me this board back in uh, at VCF East. 
and I, I didn't do anything with it. Well, I mean, I've been doing stuff with it. I just haven't been able to fix it as of yet. And I've made progress, but it would be nice to get this thing back to him and get something out of my workshop. Um, he also gave me a 386 board and that had some issues. I forget if it had bad traces. I think it did have a bad trace, but the main issue was that the clock chip was bad on it. So I replaced the clock chip and that board's totally fine. Except for he's gonna need new RAM because it had like 100 nanosecond RAM in there. Can't, 386s don't like 100 nanosecond RAM. I think the RAM chips on here are 41256 RAM chips. Okay, so that's the first step <laughs> of getting these stupid chips off. So what we're going to do now is do the same thing on the second chip. And then we're going to heat up the Moo Gun and take off these first two chips. The other thing is if anyone happens to uh, know of where to find the motherboard manual for this thing, it might help somewhat because there's jumpers on this thing that I have no idea what they do. So also, if anyone's joined late, um, hello, <laughs> and uh, we got the Mac TV to work. Um, there's still caps that I need to get so for the TV tuner, so I wasn't able to try that yet. Um, but the Mac TV turned on finally after an ultrasonic clean and re-soldering several of the chips that were kind of gross looking. So we have all these chips now. Ready to be solder sucked. Just gonna wait for my soldering 
desoldering station to heat up. Also, massive shout out to Gut Bomb for donating the desoldering station. It helped a lot during the Mac TV stuff that I was doing this week when I was redoing the um, putting caps on the analog board because these kind of caps and analog boards are like that's a match made in heaven for the desoldering station. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get out my retro tip tester. Get that ready to go. For people that haven't seen this thing before, what this is gonna let us do is put these RAM, chip, RAM chips in here and hit the button and it goes beep bop bloop and then it'll tell us if these chips are any good. So I'm not sure, I probably won't be able to uh, do this in the microscope. Well, let's see. This will be easier for me to do outside of the microscope. So let's put this aside. Let's get this thing out. Hey, Ian Scott, welcome. Yeah, I found the board on the, re the retro web as well, but there's no jumpers. I think they do have a BIOS for it now. When I first looked, I don't think they had the BIOS. So this is, this is one of the situations where the Mugun can have some issues. Um, because these pads are very small, and so it's hard to get the heat on there yeah okay so I think we're not gonna use the moo gun on this one because our our pads are just too small uh, which re retro chip tester this is the retro chip tester pro revision 1.2 K yeah this thing's been awesome. It helped me figure out what was wrong with my uh, um, Apple IIe, or no, Apple II Plus. Yeah, I need to see if there's like a slightly smaller tip if you can get one for that desoldering station because it's like just so freaking close. Going back to my old soda pult. Me and the Sadapult. We've been through a lot. Yeah, the price is a little a little excessive for the uh, Retro Chip Tester Pro. <laughs> but it's one of those things where I was like, eh, there's really no other way. Because I have like tons of old chips for like RAM chips um, 
and all the old LS logic chips. It just helps out so much with that kind of stuff. So, and you know, the other thing is everyone doesn't need one. Um, you know, if anyone has a project where, you know, you need this and you happen to be located in New England, just give me a call. Hit me up on the social medias. You can borrow it. This thing does get filled up with solder. the rhythm of removing ram chips okay so we're we've got most of the solder off but we'll have to come back with the hot air AK Mac vintage You missed the Mac TV, K Mac. We uh, we got the Mac TV working. I think what it really needed was some ultrasonic cleaning, and that's probably what got rid of some of the nastiness and let that thing power up all right. So now we're working on a Samsung S330. IBM XT clone board that I think has bad RAM and you know because these things were so wonderful back in the day we're just desoldering the RAM chips Okay, now we'll use the hot air. We're gonna go up to 390. One ten units. Okay. Um no, I haven't tried reading the original RAM chip. So we're going to stick our, or I haven't tried reading the original ROM chip. Um, we're going to stick the tweezers under here. We're not really pulling on the RAM chip at all. We've just got them in there ready to pry it out when it's ready. So now we're going to come in with the hot air.
going. Just shift it a lot. One. There's two. Okay, so now you can see, oh yeah, I was also worried about traces under the ROM chip, so I checked all those, they're okay. But you can see here, all of our traces are nice and happy. It takes a lot of work, but it's a way to uh, get all these things off nice and safely. Alright, so let's set this aside for a second. And... No, I actually need to find a set of those desoldering needles. Yeah. Okay, I need some electricity for this thing. Just a micro USB. My electricity isn't good enough. Let's go here. Come on, electricity. There we go. I'll take the peel. I'll do the peel. Y'all got to see the peel live. All right, so this is our main menu on this thing. Uh, I think this, so we have four buttons here. You can go and do this kind of thing. I think this is gonna fall under common. Oh no, we gotta go back. Uh, we gotta go to DRAMs, not SRAMs. DRAMs, here we go, hit OK, and we go, four, one, two, five, six, which is what these things are, put that there like that, close up our thing, and hit OK. So that's going to go for a little bit. So yeah, we'll pull all the RAM chips and test them, put sockets back in. But yeah, this is going to be the process. You missed the, the Mac TV, Ron. We, we got it to boot. Now we're we're watching RAM check. Darn, Ron, you have a lot of opinions about all the computers I fix. You say, oh, it's just a 2SI. Oh, it's still just a Mac TV. <laughs> Ron hates all the computers I work on. It's 
So based off of past history, if the chip goes this long, it's most likely fine. Normally when they're bad, they're bad. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's such a weird thing to have a 68030 inside of a audio-visual machine. Um, it's kind of cool. One of the first computers with a CD-ROM drive like that. Jack 68K says the chip tester should have a vaporized button to dispose of bad chips. Yeah, it'd be nice to have a, like a way to explode it. Round two. <laughs> this thing just keeps going. Straighten out this chip while we wait. All right, and also let's go back to, oh, you can't see this anymore because I switched. But anyway, Keith Sheehan was the person that won the Mac LC3. So we'll try to get in touch with him. And if, uh, if we can't, then we'll pick somebody else next weekend. Well, you want to... We're going to let it go just so that you can hear the, the lovely beep. One bit fever dreams here. How's it going? One bit. We're sort of winding down. So I'm, I'm, working so we already did work on the the mac tv and it booted um oh there was the happy thing that passed um let's set this chip aside put in our next one again okay oh <laughs> okay well that's something Gonna clean off the legs real quick. So it didn't even see this chip as being a chip. Use our soldering iron. Sorry, that I know this isn't really framed up really well, but I'm gonna heat that up. So I just took off some of the residual solder there. 
Chaotic System, welcome. Or hello again. For those joining late, oh, well, there's a little bit of solder here. Maybe that was our issue. Looked like there was a little bit of solder between the pins. Um, so yeah, if you're joining late, we, uh, we put the chip, uh, the Mac TV, I had taken all the chips off and, um, yep, that chip is shot. There we go. Nice. Um, so the Mac TV, uh, I took a bunch of chips off, ultrasonically cleaned the board, and then today on the stream, I put the chips back in. I also redid some of the caps on the um, analog board. Um, I still need to do more caps on the analog board. There are a ton of caps on the analog board. Um, but I wasn't going to bore people with, with excessive recapping. So what I instead we're doing now is... Uh, so yeah, once I did all that, the system booted up. Um, and so... Ron says a subscriber is never late. They li arrive precisely when they mean to. Good job. Uh, that is, that's very chill, Ron. I appreciate that. Um, so yes, if you're, if you're arriving at 1.15 PM Eastern time, as opposed to when the stream started. So we put all the chips back on the board and, uh, it booted right the heck up. So the Mac TV is good. Um, I still need to recap the TV tuner part of it um, because there are multiple parts of the TV tuner that has caps. There were a bunch over here that were all leaky. Uh, so that needs to be recapped. I need to order the caps for that still. So someday we'll get to play our Atari 6 2600 on this thing. Try one more time. So this is just a little eraser polishing thing that I use to clean stuff sometimes. Yeah, this chip is bad. So this is a, a XT clone board, a Samsung S330 that JVHS had given me at, at VCF East. Um, and so I've done a bunch of work on this board. Uh, new CPU socket, fixed traces, new crystal and socket, fixed this weird little transistor thing um put a new bios in it and the bios gives me beep codes and i think the beep codes is saying bad ram which if this ram chip is actually as bad as it seems that would prevent this system from booting so um i need to get out of here because uh we'll be uh I have to go and frolic and do fun activities today. Um, so maybe tomorrow, if I have time, I'll hop on Dave's stream and maybe we can get this board booted up on during Dave's stream. So check, check out Dave's vintage Apple tech. He does his great streams every Sunday with lots of excellent guests. I show up sometimes. I won't consider myself one of the excellent guests. Um, but yeah, so uh, thank you all for stopping by today. Congratulations to, uh, oh, I already forgot his name, Keith Sheehan, who is the winner of the LC3 giveaway. Um, but yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, lots of good stuff happening today. We made some progress on multiple projects. Um, but yeah, thanks everyone for stopping by and I will most likely be back again next weekend. So have a good week, y'all.